Welcome to another episode of Congressional Solutions, the only show that says, don't worry, Congress has a solution to this non-sarcastically. Today we're talking about gun control legislation, because peer pressure. I've heard a lot of calls that we need to write some laws to take care of this, but it turns out we already have plenty of prospective laws waiting to be read by the Senate. My goal today is to talk about our current legislative options before we start pushing redundant bills down this already clogged pipeline. Now I'm going to start by talking about two house pass gun control measures. First, California's 5th District Democratic Representative Mike Thompson's Bipartisan Background Checks Act of 2019. And here's a picture of that very same representative apparently auditioning to replace the Marlboro Man. Now the other bill that recently passed in the House is South Carolina's 6th Congressional District Democratic Representative Jim Clyburn's Enhanced Backgrounds Check Act of 2019. Guess they couldn't get bipartisan support for that second one. First though, let's go with the Bipartisan Backgrounds Check Act of 2019. And honestly, before I get into it, this act is about as bipartisan as the Democratic People's Republic of Korea is democratic. Hey, Kim Jong-un won another election. Man, I really thought Political Prisoner 138 had a chance this year. It passed with the support of 8 out of 199 Republicans. I mention this because last time I talked about this bill, quite a few Republicans sent me angry messages because of the assertion that they supported this gun control bill. George Orwell's 1984 came up quite a few times. The purpose of this act is to utilize the current background checks process in the United States to ensure that individuals prohibited from gun ownership are not able to obtain firearms. Now the radical idea of enforcing the law regarding gun ownership probably sounds pretty uncontroversial to most of you, but as Texas Republican Representative Dan Crenshaw and a man whose opinions on this issue you can probably ascertain from the words Texas Republican Representative had some warnings about this bill. What universal background checks actually mean? They, what they don't mean is this. They don't mean background checks at a gun dealer. That already happens. That's already absolutely required. And we all agree with that. What they do mean is that you can no longer transfer a gun to a friend. You can no longer let your girlfriend or boyfriend uh, use your weapon if you leave and they're at home trying to defend themselves. They would be made a felon if they used that weapon. Well, when you put it that way, this sounds like about as terrible an idea as shooting a video in profile mode. What are you, dude, a Vine star? Interestingly enough, this bill actually bends over backwards to address these concerns in a way that might have some of you questioning, does this bill do anything? Now I read this exception section and not only is it long, but it also reads like whoever wrote it had a thesaurus and was really trying to impress someone. Basically it says, if you're not a licensed seller of guns, you cannot transfer a gun to another person who is not licensed to carry a weapon, except if you're keeping it in the family. Loans and gifts between domestic partners, parents and children, including step parents and their stepchildren, Aw, uh, how progressive. Siblings, aunts or uncles, and their nieces and nephews, so don't worry, you definitely have access to your cool uncle's inexplicably and intimidatingly large gun collection. And of course, you can't forget grandparents and their grandchildren. Now these transfers can't happen if you know the family member you're giving it to is going to use it to commit a crime, or the state has officially designated them as a person who legally can't be in possession of a firearm. So at least we're drawing the line somewhere. Now some of you might hear that and think, but what if my friend has a really cool gun and I want to use it while not going through all of the work of getting a license to use it? Well, never fear because transfers to people without licenses can happen at shooting ranges. Now I hear what you're saying again, but Steven, shooting galleries? They're so lame, just shooting a piece of paper. I want to take a life. Well, in that case, transfers can also happen between licensed and unlicensed participants for the purposes of hunting, trapping, or fishing. Although if you're using your rifle to go fishing, I hope you brought some food from home. Did you catch anything? 
Now, of course, it's a different story, apparently, if you're shooting those fish in a barrel. But let's say there's an open carry rally and you want to be included because you love guns, just not enough to get a license. Are you going to have to be the guy in the corner who didn't bring a gun to that rally? Again, never fear, because anytime you're in the presence of the transfer, you are good to go. Lastly, let's get back to Dan Crenshaw's dreaded home invasion. If someone's in my house and I don't have a license to use a gun, but there's a gun sitting in the corner, can I use it in self-defense? And the answer, of course. In cases of imminent death or great bodily harm, domestic violence, dating partner violence, sexual assault, stalking, and domestic abuse, those transfer restrictions don't apply. So with all of those exceptions, you might be asking yourself, what does this thing even do? Well, if you overlook everything we just went over, this bill makes it so that if you want to buy a gun, you're gonna need to get a background check conducted by a licensed firearm seller, as opposed to... Private dealers are not legally required to conduct background checks. I would ask you for a Virginia driver's license. That way I know you're from within the state. But if I gave you a fake Virginia driver's license, you would never know. I would have no idea. Would you trust me? Do I have an honest face? Would you sell it to me? I'd, I'd trust you. You look okay. like you have an honest face okay. to me. I mean. but, but that being said, sometimes if you don't think someone has an honest face, if you have a bad vibe, you don't sell it. Correct. Ah yes, the Marion Williams method of background checks. Well, there were good vibes and I even made him put on a mood ring to be extra thorough. It wasn't red, so I sold him a gun. Now again, last time I talked about this issue, I got a lot of angry comments saying that this gun show loophole wasn't a thing. Heck, you can even find clips of mainstream Republicans arguing that. Because you don't know the details of it, but the so-called gun, uh, gun show loophole, which is I think what he's talking about, doesn't exist. Boy, does he look confident in that answer. Alright, here's the deal. All federally licensed sellers are required to perform a background check. But if you're just a guy with a collection of guns that occasionally sells one or two, the regulations on you vary state by state. Now this bill would make it a federal law that anyone transferring someone else a gun in every state would have to run a basic background check before the sale. You know, unless they're family, you're going hunting, you want to shoot targets, or just hanging out together somewhere. So that's the Bipartisan Background Checks Act of 2019. Now it's time to get into the more controversial. I'm proud to co-sponsor the Enhanced Background Checks Act, H.R. 1112. While that last act said background checks on all sales of weapons, the second act, the Enhanced Background Checks Act of 2019 says yeah, and on top of that, those background checks need to be a lot more thorough. Currently, if a background check takes more than three days, eh, we got tired of looking you up online. Just sell them the gun. The main thing this bill would do was expand that period to 10 days, with an additional 10 days if the feds are still on the fence about whether you're going to go buy that gun and immediately start committing crimes with it after the sale. This isn't to say that the average background check is now going to take 10 days, as most of my research seems to indicate that background checks are probably finished long before even that 3 day mark. But if there's just some sort of hole in your data, the government will have a little extra time to fill that stuff in. Advocates point to James Comey saying that shooter Dylan Roof should not have been able to buy the gun he used to shoot and kill nine people at a black church in South Carolina, according to authorities. On April 11th, Dylan Roof went in to purchase this gun. When he did that, they gathered some biographical information about him, and then the FBI had three days to look into his past and decide whether, whether or not to approve this purchase. Yeah, Dylan Roof had a federal drug charge that would have made it illegal for him to buy a gun. But the way the system was working out, the person in charge of performing the background check was having to reach out to all sorts of police departments between county, state, and federal precincts, and the three day clock just ran out before she was able to get her hands on the police report that would have definitively shown Dylan Ruth to be ineligible for gun ownership. So we sold him the gun. 
The other thing this act does is work with the government accountability office to see if taking the extra 7 days is actually helping to identify more people with traits that would make them ineligible to own a gun. Or whether this whole thing is just a waste of time. Now of course the next hurdle for both of these bills is there. Suspected to be defeated in the Senate. Donald Trump, who at one point said he was in favor of tougher gun laws, says he will veto anything that makes owning a gun harder. Now to the unpassed bills, starting with Maryland's 4th Congressional District Democratic Representative Anthony Brown's Raise the Age Act. What this does is pretty simple. While you need to be 21 to buy a handgun, you can be 18 to buy a semi-automatic rifle. And this was on full display when the Parkland shooter legally bought the semi-automatic rifle he used to shoot up his school. Now interestingly enough, and this is going to stand out to the people paying attention during our discussion of the gun show loophole, but this new legislation would only apply to federally licensed gun sellers. So if you're 18 and looking to buy a semi-automatic rifle, call up your local gun collector for a sale. And if you're in the right state, you should be good to go. This would of course provide carve outs for 18 year olds who are in the army and in law enforcement. Now one interesting proponent of this bill is the current president. It doesn't make sense that I have to wait till I'm 21 to get a handgun but I can get this weapon at 18, I don't know. So I was just curious as to what you did in your bill. We, you don't address we didn't, it? We didn't address it as president. Look, I think you know why? Because you're afraid of the NRA, right? Oh. <laughs> the man Trump was savagely laying into right there was Pennsylvania Republican Senator Pat Toomey, who's currently working with West Virginia Democratic Senator Joe Manchin on the Public Safety and Second Amendment's Rights Protection Act. Now this act is still in the writing stage, but from what they've released, it's surprisingly comprehensive. Although it's filled with, wow, how is that not currently a thing proposals. Starting with getting all the names of prohibited purchasers onto the background check system. Yeah, we're really going after the low hanging fruit with this one, but hey, someone needs to pick it. Right now we have a registry of people who can't buy guns because of their criminal history. But states aren't required to participate in this registry. This measure would cut federal financing to states that didn't submit their information to that registry. Second, it would require background checks for firearm sales. Now this section reads a lot like the bipartisan bill we talked about earlier, saying that all private owners looking to transfer their guns to other people would have to perform a background check first. Except for temporary transfers or transfers between family members, of course. The last thing this legislation would do is establish a national commission on mass violence. Now, This commission would be 6 experts appointed by Mitch McConnell and they're tasked to research everything related to mass shootings, including guns, school safety, mental health, and violent media or video games. Yeah, this group might be more effective at curbing violence in Los Santos and Liberty City. But finally, we come to the last piece of legislation today. Enter Massachusetts Democratic Senator Ed Markey. Gun violence, which kills 33,000 Americans a year, has a budget at the Centers for Disease Control of zero dollars. That is unacceptable. His bill, which is a blissful half a page, yeah, it would probably be faster for me to just read it rather than explain it to you, gives the CDC $50 million a year from 2020 to 2025 to research the broad topics of firearm safety and gun violence prevention. It doesn't go into any more detail than that, so I can't either. We'd have an agenda free institution researching this to come up with solutions though. So I'd be pretty excited to see what they have to say. That's how Congress is currently trying to fight the gun violence epidemic in this country. Thank you and sadly enough, that's probably not all I'm going to have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news, remember to subscribe by clicking this floating logo to the right of my head. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and click here if you want to see congressional solutions to other issues. Remember to give me a thumbs up and as always, thank you for watching.